So now in this video, we come back to my power supply. So I have a couple of numbers on here that I like for my supercapacitors. So they have a maximum voltage that you can charge them to of 2.7 volts. You don't want to charge them higher than that. They'll charge to whatever voltage you uh, charge them to, but above 2.7 volts you can expect damage to them. So you don't want to charge them above uh, 2.7 volts. And it's nice to charge them at one amp of current because for every farad of capacitance they have, if you fill them with one amp of current uh, steadily, you'll get one volt change for every farad uh, after a second. So 10 farad capacitor would take 10 seconds at one amp to change one volt. So say going from one volt to two volts would take 10 seconds if it's a 10 farad capacitor. So the one amp makes the math easy. There is a problem though is uh, short uh, super capacitors I mean they do not have any internal resistance the majority of them so I'm going to turn this on now now the output is on you can see we have a voltage there when it's off there's no voltage so we have a voltage at the board but the uh, red wire and the black wire are uh, separated all the positive and negative so there's no load we're going to take a 5 ohm resistor so I did this with the super capacitor I charged it through a 5 ohm resistor I had to raise the voltage to an unsafe level and turn it off before the capacitor uh, charged up to 2.7 volts and uh, I really would rather not do that to begin with. So we're going to start with one 5 ohm resistor. So this is a 5 ohm 10 watt resistor and I got five of them right here. So we can put them in parallel. So there you can see the uh, voltage. Let's go to current. You can see that it's close to half an amp of current. If you take 2.5 volts and divide it by 5 ohms, you'll get 0.5 amps of current. So this may be slightly above 5 ohms, plus there's some resistance in the wires and stuff. So it's probably a little more than 5 ohms that the meter sees, and so even though it's 2.7 volts slightly above 2.5, we're a little bit below 0.5 amps, but we're close enough to just make the math easy, 0.5. So we can take a second one and put it in series. So now the meter sees about 2.5 ohms of resistance because we have the same voltage across the two of these, 2.7 volts right there, it's still holding the voltage nicely. And so each one of them is passing about 4.5 amps of current in that range right there. So I think this one's also slightly more than 5 ohms of resistance by just a little bit. But in any case, there you can see we're close to our 1 amp. And if we put a third one in series, so this will allow 3 times the current. There you can see that there was a CV up there. Now there's a CC. So the meter, it has the current limited right there. So as long as if we're charging a supercapacitor, that's my main interest for... Uh, this particular video series. This is like the second or third video I did on this topic, but it's not an actual series. But in any case, I want to be able to charge at uh, one amp of current right there. And you can see we can do that for a while, as long as the voltage difference is uh, great enough. So in any case, we don't have to stop at three though. But we reached our current limit there. So I'm gonna hit set. I don't want to change the voltage. I can change the voltage really quick there you can see we're putting a lot more, actually no, it held the, uh, let me do that, uh, I'm going to change this to voltage, right there, and you can see that the voltage is slightly lower because we reached our peak there. Now, if I go up there and raise the voltage, again, we have the current set, so it's holding whatever voltage it needs for that current. That's another thing to uh, note really quickly. Let's put this up to 1.5. So, uh, there we go. And, or we could just go to 2 amps, even, right there. So, 2 amps. That will output. Now the voltage is 2.7 volts. And we can hit uh, set, come down here, and see the current that's being provided. So, 1.3 right there. So, it can still hold 2.7 volts across these. It stays below 2 amps of current right there. And uh, so that's good enough. So this is about uh, the resistance we have here is about 5 ohms divided by 3. Plus there's resistance in the wires and stuff and whatnot. But in uh, any case, 
we're not going to make the math too complicated. The main point is we're getting about three times the uh, current right there because we have about one third of the resistance because they're in parallel. And uh, there we go. You can see we can still hold that voltage across them, 2.7. And now I think this will finally lower the resistance enough. We'll get more than two amps of current. So we can look at that. We can see if it's less than two amps of current. No, it's still holding the uh, voltage. So in any case, we didn't get quite to uh, 2 amps, but we can see here that, uh, alright, now it's going down a little bit. So maybe as they warm up, they're providing a little less resistance or something. But in uh, any case, that's all stuff to look at for fun later on. There we are, really close to 2 amps of current. So we have the uh, constant current there. I can go here and lower it. There you can see, right there. So it's going to have to drop the voltage a little bit to to match that so in any case this is good enough so there we have about one ohm of resistance right there so I'm going to turn the uh, power supply off here and we can uh, just leave it there I'll unplug it so it's off off and then unplug this from the board let the resistors cool down a little bit so we're gonna get the uh, multimeter really quick and see what resistance we have. So it should be about one ohm of resistance. So it looks like this meter will still work with one ohm of resistance. So I have this set to measure resistance right there in ohms. And so nothing is connected to these. They're all connected one side to the negative rail. They're all connected one side to the positive rail. Positive and negative are separated. There's no polarity here. It doesn't matter which probe we go to. It's putting a little current through the resistor and uh, seeing how much current goes through to get its, it has a set voltage across it, so it's seeing how much current goes through there. So there you can see, these resistors and uh, board connections and whatnot, we have a total of 1.2 ohms of resistance. That's with five of them. That's what we expect, five divided by one. And uh, these had time to cool down, plus I pulled the one that uh, we plugged in last, so it probably wasn't as warm as the other ones. But there you can see, now we got about, uh, once I get a connection, right there, 1.5 ohms of resistance, about that. So whatever five divided by four is, is probably what we had. And so now you can probably see why we had less current, as we had less resistors in series. So this is probably about five divided by three. And then this one's really easy. So five divided by two, 2.5 ohms approximately pretty close right there so 2.7 so each one of these was probably about uh, 5.1 ohms of resistance something like that but uh, maybe one was a little higher than the other we'll look at that so there this one's actually pretty high 5.2 right there for just the one of them so that's probably why we be began with such low I didn't measure these resistors so this is a different resistor there you can see about 5.1 so looks like most of them are slightly higher maybe one or two just a tad bit lower but in any case hopefully that made sense we can use five of these in series uh, maybe I'll buy a really high wattage resistor that's only one ohm and see how that does but at least with five of these in series for an equivalent of about one ohm of resistance is that value doesn't matter just so much as we can allow whatever current I want at the constant current range so that the meter doesn't turn off because it sees a short circuit. As long as I can get the current that I want using five of these in series, not end of the world. So, or five of them in parallel is not the end of the world. We'll just connect them in series. So I would put them to the positive rail there and then have for the supercapacitor go uh, positive side of the supercapacitor to the resistor, negative side to the negative rail, and then we can put that current through a single resistor or a bunch of uh, parallel resistors to charge there and uh, we'll be able to provide more current and so that's probably what I'll be doing in future videos but in any case hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully it all made sense so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video